So we all know that Marvel puts more money into their merchandising and advertising than most companies make in an entire year. And it's not even all the obvious things like toys and mugs and t-shirts. No, it seems like even the weird things are getting churned out faster than Marvel can produce new movies. So this got me thinking, is it possible to live entirely off of Marvel merchandise? Well, to help me out with this, I enlisted the help of my good friend Red Bard, who posed a similar question for Neon Genesis Evangelion and produced an entire video dedicated to this a few months ago. So ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Tony. He's your normal everyday guy, but with two key exceptions. One, he owns every single piece of official Marvel merchandise that has ever existed. And also, he lives in a world where every single campaign that Marvel has done with other companies is currently ongoing right now. Tony wakes up in his bedroom, decked out in Avengers wallpaper, which, by the way, he changes out regularly since he has quite the selection. His bed is fitted with a Spider-Man bed cover. Yeah, not just sheets, but an entire bed cover. That said, of course he does actually have Marvel sheets, pillowcases, and a comforter, and maybe even a plushie or two for good measure. He hops out in his Captain America pajamas and Infinity Gauntlet slippers. He then tiredly stumbles toward the kitchen, which is past his Ant-Man ant farm in his premium Hulkbuster statue. He makes a fresh cup of joe in his Iron Man coffee maker in one of his many, many, oh god, so many mugs. While it brews, Tony decides to whip up some breakfast. He peruses his vast collection of Marvel branded appliances, like his Spider-Man pancake maker, his Groot waffle maker, or maybe he could double up on Spidey Berry Pop-Tarts in both his Captain America and Captain Marvel toasters. He ultimately decides to grab a cereal from his pre-MCU collection of Marvel branded cereals, and of course, his finely crafted Wolverine bowl. I know it's a candy bowl for Halloween, but come on, how could you not want to eat cereal out of this thing? After a hearty meal, Tony fills up yet another mug and waters his Groot Chia Pet, but suddenly, he hears an alarm from his official Thor Dumbbell Alarm Clock. Hold up, pause. It's both? It's seriously both? That's so specific! What possible function could having both in the same device serve? Actually, you know what? It doesn't even matter because it's time for a workout so he can get a body like Iron Man. His boxing gloves are not only Iron Man themed, but they're actually rated the best boxing gloves of 2019 by Men's Health. For a little bit of extra flair, Tony suits up in not a tank top, not leggings, not a t-shirt, but in this super slick Punisher gi with comic art inside of it. It's honestly super high quality, and yet somehow it's also $30 cheaper than the boxing gloves. So now that he's dressed to kick some ass, Tony drops to his knees and he just goes goes to town on a Captain America child's punching bag. Oh my god, look at this guy go. After working up a sweat, it's time for Tony to hit the showers. He grabs all of his appropriate Marvel branded bath gear, save for his Infinity Stone bath bomb since he's in a hurry. He closes his Marvel shower curtain and voila! Time to dry off with his comedically large Marvel logo towel and slip into his Captain America robe before starting his daily routine. Tony starts off with a close shave with one of his many Gillette razors. Fun fact, when these came out, Gillette transformed their headquarters into Stark Industries for the day. For shaving cream, of course our boy uses Axe, since he's a big fan of The Freshman, which was Marvel's collaboration with them. They also have a mixtape, which I'm sure that Tony listens to on his Marvel stereo in order to get hype for the day to come. Uh-oh, looks like he cut himself. Good thing that he has a Marvel Band-Aid at the ready. For the rest of his routine, Tony brushes his teeth with his Marvel toothbrush and Avengers toothpaste. He dons his Captain America suit, Punisher watch, Avenger vans, and Groot ring, has a spritz of his Iron Man fragrance so you know that he smells like success, grabs his Marvel messenger bag filled with various Marvel office supplies, a few comics, and his Iron Man briefcase charger so that he can connect it to his phone in an Iron Man case with an Iron Man lightning cable for good measure. As he walks out, you might notice that Tony actually lives at the Disney Disneyland Paris Resort, and oh my god, can we just take a second to appreciate these gorgeous windows? But anyway, back on topic, so you might be wondering how Tony is gonna get to work, and the answer is in style. Everyone, feast your eyes on the official Iron Man Hyundai Kona. It is sleek, it is 
is beautiful. And actually, it's oddly affordable. Now look, I've never owned a brand new car before, but this is the equivalent to the Hyundai Kona Ultimate, which goes for about $27,000, with the Iron Man version starting at $30,000. I mean, if you're already spending twenty-seven dollars on a car, is 3 k more to make it extra unique and stylish really that bad? I mean, come on! The gear shift is an arc reactor, the tires have little helmets on them, and there's glowy Iron Man eyes on the display. It's so cool! But even though there's a large Iron Man helmet painted on the roof, you gotta wonder, is it really Marvel enough? And the answer is, of course not. We all know Tony went the extra mile and decked it out with all the Marvel auto accessories you could ever want. Oh, don't forget to change the Marvel air freshener. Now he's ready to go. And he doesn't even have to worry about dangerous traffic because Tony is insured by Geico. Though, did we not mention that the official Geico lore features the gecko wielding the Infinity Gauntlet? Yeah, that's probably worth mentioning. So, obviously Tony works at a tech firm, and clearly a successful one given his lifestyle. After all, how else could he afford his new meal near toolbox? I actually really like the design on this thing. It's really cool that the hammer is also the handle. But anyway, Tony's workstation is completely decked out with Marvel goodies. Iron Man headphones, keyboard, chair, and mouse, with a Marvel emoji mouse pad for good measure. If he gets tired through the day, then Tony can pop an official Daredevil energy shot, or maybe one of these Avengers snack packs. Of course, he keeps them in his Iron Man mini fridge. But when lunch finally rolls around, the initial plan was for Tony to heat up some Avengers chicken nuggets in his Avengers microwave, but he quickly figured out that perhaps this microwave wouldn't be right for the job. So he instead hops over to Denny's for their fan four stick promotion. Wow, a mediocre restaurant has a tie into a mediocre movie. What a surprise. He mulls over the menu a bit. You know, he's trying to choose between the Human Torch skillet, the Thing Burger, and the Invisible Woman Slam. Really? Of all the names they could have gone with, that's the one they chose? Keeping it real classy there, Denny's. Nice. But anyways, he ultimately decides to get the Fantastic Four Cheese Omelet, and he leaves a generous tip with his Marvel MasterCard that he pulls from his Marvel Magic Wallet because we all know he can, uh, afford it. Oh, <laughs> and speaking of things he can afford, today's a fine day to take a half day off work just because. Back at his pad, Tony strips down to a more comfortable outfit, turns on his Captain America popcorn maker, puts it in his endgame popcorn bowl, plops down on his couch, and snuggles up with his Ghost Rider pillow to decompress in front of his Iron Man HDTV, which is, of course, the only vessel worthy of viewing his entire collection of Marvel movies and TV shows, even the bad ones like the Iron Man anime. Yeah, bet you didn't know that one exists. Oh, <laughs> don't forget to plug in your Iron Man speakers. After unwinding for a bit, Tony remembers that his girlfriend is coming over for a date tonight. So he dons his Black Panther apron and Hulk oven mitts to whip up a fancy dinner. How about some dishes from Stanley Presents the Mighty Marvel Superheroes Cookbook from 1977? This has such gems as Thor's Asgardian Vegetable Soup, the Bedeviled Swiss Steak, and Submariner's Magnificent Tuna Bake. My personal favorite entry is the Super Meatloaf. Not because because of the recipe, because it's, well, meatloaf, but they recommend that you make it in lots of fun shapes, like a square, or a circle, or little meatballs, thus entirely defeating the point of the meat being in loaf form. But anyway, I could and probably might make an entire video dedicated to this thing, but Tony is hungry and doesn't have the patience to sit here and listen to me ramble about a 40-year-old cookbook. In fact, he already busted out his Captain America slow cooker and made some Avengers pasta, which is like a civil war in your stomach. Don't forget to wash it down with some Spider-Man Darkberry Dr. Pepper in a Marvel glass with Avengers ice cubes. Now, our boy aims to impress, so he sets the table in the most romantic fashion available. I'm talking about child's birthday party goods, paper plates, napkins, tablecloth, the whole nine yards. But he spices it up with some Punisher salt and pepper shakers and quickly changes into yet another Marvel suit. But this time, he pairs it with some Marvel's Adidas and Avengers sunglasses. And you know what? He's finished just in time because his date's just arrived. Let's go ahead and call his date, uh... You know, let's call her Pepper. Well, since we're using comic book art, I'd really prefer if we named her something different, since Tony and Pepper really weren't a thing in the comics. I mean, most people know about Iron Man through the MCU, so having someone like Madame Mask would just be confusing. <sighs> you know what? That's fair. I'll just change the head or something.
So, like Tony, Pepper is an absolute Marvel fanatic and is dressed from head to toe in stylish merch. As a matter of fact, even her makeup is courtesy of Ulta Beauty's official line of Marvel cosmetics. And you know, it's a good thing she showed up too. I mean, after all, Tony can't really play on his Marvel air hockey table or Hulk operation by himself. <laughs> well... I mean, I guess he could, but that wouldn't really be a whole lot of fun, you know? <laughs> but you know what? If Tony really wants to impress Pepper, then games just aren't gonna be enough, even if he does have a massive library of them. No, if he wants to have a truly memorable date night, he's gonna have to really turn up the pizzazz, you know, show her just how cool he is. And you know, nothing screams I'm cool and you should continue to date me, despite my frankly worrying amount of Marvel merchandise, even by the standards of the most hardcore fans. Like an I Have Issues skateboard and a Marvel helmet for safety. And yet, somehow, no, this still just isn't enough. It just doesn't pack that same rad, I'm too cool for school energy that he's really going for, you know? But incidentally, you know what else he has that might help him out right now? He has, get ready for this, a Wolverine guitar, which you can definitely bet he's gonna play the sickest of riffs off of while he skateboards across the Marvel campus in Disneyland Paris. Honestly, it doesn't even matter at this point if Pepper's in awe of this or not, because I'm in awe just saying this out loud. But even with all of this swag, Tony starts to wonder if this is enough. Am I really setting myself apart from other men, he ponders? Better be safe than sorry. He packs his Iron Man suitcase, grabs his Spider-Man neck pillow, and books a flight with United Airlines through their Spider-Man campaign, because you know that they needed some way to bribe people into actually flying with them. They did have some cute napkins, but they also gave passengers some Spidey merch, like a sleeping mask, earplugs, dental kit, a bag, and socks for some reason. But where am I supposed to put these? In the carry-on that they charged me for? Now that they're far from home, they've arrived in scenic Las Vegas, more specifically the Iron Man Hall of Armor at the Treasure Island Casino's Avengers Station to look at their collection of Iron Man suits. And so, after a long and wonderful date, Tony and Pepper are exhausted, so they get a ride back to their hotel in Audi's experimental, uh, VR rideshare game digital coaster, uh, thing. Uh, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I'm not 100% sure what this is, but Forbes and the Verge said that it's a thing that existed at one point, so... There you go. So, in conclusion, not only can you live entirely off of Marvel merchandise, but you can do it in luxury. Like, for the more casual fans, you got things like mugs, you got wall decor, you got, god, you have an advent calendar, but then, for the fan who's just really out there, for the fan who's just really lost control of their life, you know, you got things like the Spider-Man suit, or the Infinity Gauntlet piggy bank. Hey, don't judge me. I saved a lot of money on all of this thanks to our sponsor for today's video, Honey. They are a free browser extension that combs the internet for the best promo codes. That way you are saving the most money on all of your online purchases. Their extension works on over 20,000 websites like eBay, Amazon, Target, Best Buy, etc. But if I'm gonna be honest, I order a lot of pizza online and Honey has mostly saved me money from all of the dominoes that I order. But hey, do you wanna get a great deal on Marvel merch like our boy Tony from the video? Check out this Spider-Man slow cooker for 50 bucks. Just go to joinhoney.com slash comic drake, follow the prompt, and with only two clicks, you're on your way to saving money. So back to the slow cooker. Honey checks all of the available promo codes and found this one for 25% off of my order. That's 1250. You know what I can buy for 1250? Another pizza. There is literally no reason for you to not use Honey on every single one of your online purchases. It's free, and it installs in only two clicks. Get Honey for yourself at joinhoney.com slash comic drake. That's joinhoney.com slash comic drake. I also want to give a big thank you to Red Bard for helping me out with this video. At the time of this recording, she's about to hit 100,000 subscribers. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if by the time this comes up, she already hit that mark. But anyway, definitely go check out the video that she did on if you can live entirely off of Neon Genesis Evangelion merch. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.